For those of you that have subscribed to the channel for a little while, you'll recognize this board. This is a CC3D, and as well as being installed here on top of this tricopter, we've also installed it in other things like a 250 class quad. I am a big fan of the CC3D for a couple of reasons. First of all, the CC3D allows you to make a craft very simply. The setup wizard is really intuitive, and if you're a new builder or pilot, it can be put together in relatively no time at all. The other thing I really like is that it also runs different versions of the firmware. It'll run OpenPilot, which we'll talk about in this video, but you can also install Clean Flight on it as well. So you also have an option of the firmware or operating system that the board flies. Last thing I like about this is actually it flies really, really well. I've got it on this and I said the 250 quadcopter and both provide a really nice flying experience. I tend to use Open Pilot when I'm running a CC3D and leave clean flight for the NASI 32. The challenge comes is when you're running out of space or you're starting to get a little bit tight in a model for wires and cables because with the case on top of the CC3D it starts to get a little bit bulkier than normal. So what I want to talk about today is not the CC3D that we've been looking at so far in the channel. I want to talk to you about this, its little baby brother. This is a CC3D Atom sometimes called the Mini, but it's called the Atom on all the paperwork that I've ever seen. As you can see, it's physically an awful lot smaller than the classic CC3D chassis. So it gives us a little bit more room to move things around. So this one has actually been provided to us by GearBest.com. So I want to say a very big thank you to GearBest for sending this to me to try. I, as I said, I'm a big fan of the CC3D and getting a chance to play with this smaller form factor board has been a lot of fun. So let me briefly show you what's come in the pack along with this cute little board. In addition to the board itself, we've also got a mounting pad and the cables that, that you use to connect to the receiver and the auxiliary ports as well. We have a little setup that actually would hold the, the receiver wires for things like a Tyrannus D4R2 receiver. So that's a nice addition in the kit. I like that. I like the fact it's the same color plastic as the case too. It also has an anti-vibration mount. I think these are pretty essential if you're going to put a CC3D craft on anything that isn't perfectly balanced. I had a lot of problems setting up my tricopter initially and that was due to two things. One of which was a little bit of vibration for one of the props that was damaged. So that's great to have. And then finally we have our manual. And the manual itself is pretty basic. It just shows you where everything plugs in. So if you want to know a little bit more about how you set up the CC3D Atom, then what I'd recommend is go and have a look at the CC3D series. We go through each of the steps in turn and everything that you can do with the CC3D in that series, you can absolutely do with this smaller form factor board. There are a couple of changes that you need to be aware of though if you're watching that video series. So let me talk about the differences between this and its bigger brother. So here are the two boards. We have the traditional case on the left, Atom case on the right. Both of them are arranged in the same way so that the forward facing side is at the top of the screen. And you can see that a couple of things have been moved around to facilitate the smaller form factor. The RC inputs are still at the same side. They're on the left hand side. The flexi ports have moved from the back of the board to the opposite side on the Atom. And the motor out connections have moved from the, the side to the back. And again, there are different versions available of the Atom case. This has the straight pins. The only other difference then is actually the USB micro connection. So here it is on the side of the board. There's the RC inputs at the side and underneath it is that mini connection. And that is a little bit different from the classic board. So what we're going to do is in a future video, I'm actually going to use um, this board to build a flying wing. And on that video, we'll talk about how you can set up a CC3D so that it will automatically do all of the stabilization and auto level on another craft. And that's the real benefit of having this much smaller form factor in that now, because it's so small, we can stick it in a lot of craft where the larger traditional one wouldn't have fit. So we'll do that in another video series, but first of all, let me just connect it up to the PC and I'll show you it working and how it looks in OpenPilot. So here we are, we have our little CC3D Atom on the table and we have the 
cable plugged into it but not yet plugged into the computer. So if we go onto the netbook what we'll do is we shall start OpenPilot and if you're not sure about OpenPilot and all these different things then this is all covered in our CC3D series. What I'll do is I'll actually put a link in the description to that. This will take a minute to load so I'll just fast forward through this section. So there we are, we have our open pilot ready to rock and roll. At the moment there is no board connected, so I'm going to plug it in now and you'll see the wonderful pretty lights on it. I'll cover it up. Here we go. It's going to install a device driver. What I'm going to do is actually click skip obtaining driver software from Windows Update because that's going to speed things up dramatically. Say yes. Okay, almost there. Okay, it's going to tell me that the GCS and firmware versions are out of date. That's just because the board that's been supplied as um, is the firmware on it that it when it was manufactured, whereas the one on the computer is a little bit later. But that's not a problem. So we can actually go and uh, manually select the firmware. So what we can do here is we can either use the wizard, which we've looked at before, or we can just go and update the firmware manually through OpenPilot itself. So we'll just say upgrade and erase. It'll upload the firmware onto the board. There's a new one going down. and then it will reboot. And once it's rebooted and connected, then we can go back into the flight mode. I need to calibrate the accelerometers here, but you can see as I move the board around on the table, we are moving the artificial horizon and everything is working. So that's how we get everything started and from here on in we can go through the videos that we were looking at at the start. The other way obviously to set this up is actually to go through the vehicle setup wizard in the same way as we did in our CC3D series. And the great thing about this is that the vehicle setup wizard will ask you each individual step one after the other and also make sure that you're doing things like removing props and being very careful as you set it up so they don't get into a dangerous situation. So finally, I'd just like to say thank you again to Gearbest for sending me this board to try. Keep your eyes open for the upcoming video that we have where we're going to try and install this into a flying wing. And finally, if you want to have a look at this particular board from Gearbest, I've put a link in the description below the video so you can click on that and go and have a look. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.